Hey, what's going on today, people? We're going to be talking about how to install KubeCart on Ubuntu server. Now, you need to make some assumptions as we do this. One is, you have a user account on the Ubuntu server called Bob with a password of password. Please never use that for a real account, but for the purposes of this demonstration and walkthrough, that's what you're going to be, is Bob with a password of password. You also will have a MySQL account on the Ubuntu server that allows you to create databases. And this is very important. You're not going to be the root user of the machine or of the database. Also, the account Bob is a member of the WWW data group, which owns the Etsy WWW HTML directory where the server's default site is stored. And that's what we're actually going to be using is just the default site. So we're going to be using some tools to pull this off. One is MOBA Xterm, which is a terminal program that lets you do SSH, Telnet, RSH, and all kinds of lovely connections to servers. And we're also going to be using Ubuntu 1804 long-term support server with PHP, MySQL, and Apache installed. Doesn't really matter what versions we have. Any modern version of Linux will run KubeCart just fine. We also are going to have PHP My Admin installed on the server. And that's how we're going to interface with our database to actually create the database we need for KubeCart. And we're also going to be using KubeCart 6. Now, to speed things along, I have already downloaded KubeCart. So when we get to that point, uh, please note that I've already downloaded it. And you can see it right there, the little zip file waiting for us to do something. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is fire up MOBA Xterm, our terminal program. So I'm just going to click start and type MOBA Xterm. And I just use the personal edition. There is a paid one that has a few more features, but this will do exactly what we need. So let's just get it fired up. And here it is. I'm going to go to session. Okay, and we're going to do an SSH session, which is secure shell. That is a pretty common way to connect to remote Linux and Unix servers these days. So I'll just hit SSH. And our host for this is just going to be Ubuntu hyphen server. It's a little test server I've got set up just for doing this exercise. And our username is Bob. And remember, Bob is not a root user or a pseudo user. Um, everything Bob can do is only because he is a member of the WWW data group. So I'll click OK. Now i got to put in Bob's password. Okay, and MOBA Xterm is going to say, do you want to save the password for Bob? I would say normally don't do that, but yeah, we'll go ahead for the purposes of convenience. So... What you'll notice about MOBA Xterm over here on the left is that um, it has a file browser. And you're probably thinking, well, what is home Bob? That is the user Bob's home directory. I can read and write anything to the Bob folder. Okay. So <clears throat> in order to get KubeCart into um, the www directory where the default website is I'm gonna first copy kubecart the zip file into the Bob home directory okay so it's as simple as clicking and holding dragging and dropping and it won't take long okay because kubecart's not that big and if you actually want to see from the terminal if that file is in there first thing I'm gonna do is do PWD which is print working directory and that just shows us where I'm currently um, situated on this terminal line. And home Bob is what I am looking at. And you'll notice you have this little tilde there. In the Linux and Unix world, anytime you see tilde, that means home folder. So this is user Bob's home folder. Now if I do ls space hyphen la, that will list all the files in Bob's home directory. 
because that's where we're at, and it'll tell us um, the name of the file and who owns it. And you'll see everything in here is owned by Bob. Don't worry about the fact that dot dot is owned by root. That just means that the folder up above Bob, which is home, is owned by root. And that's fine. It's supposed to be. Okay, so we've got cube cart physically placed in there. So now the first thing I'm going to do is mu move the cube cart um, zip file into the um, var www.html folder, which is where the website lives. So to do that, I'm going to do mv space, and then I'm going to type what we want to move. And you'll notice I only typed cu, and then it shot out real fast. The way I did that is I did cu, and then I hit tab. That's called autocomplete. And if there's a file in here that matches the stuff that's already there, it will um, shoot that out. So you don't have to type it all. And then I'm going to do slash var slash www slash html. And that's going to move the cube cart zip file into that html folder. Okay. And a lot of times in Linux when you don't see anything, no news is good news. So now I can go here and look, and you can see it has been moved. It's not there anymore. So now let's jump on over to the server uh, directory where the HTML folder is. Okay, and this is the root for our uh, web server. Now, you probably wouldn't want to have KubeCard in the root of a real server, but remember, we're just learning and trying things out right now so if you look we have the cube cart um, file in here that's been moved over with a zip file and uh, we need to do some things before we actually extract this so the first thing I'm gonna do is do what's called a U mask and space 755 what that's going to do is set it up so that this folder, whenever we extract the cube cart contents, uh, every file and folder will have the permissions of 755. Now, one of these days I'll do a full video about permissions, but we're just going to do that to ease some things. Okay. And so now I'm going to unzip it just by doing unzip and then type in cube cart. Um, and notice I did my little autocomplete thing again. So I'll hit enter, and now we have all these files that have been dumped in here. Okay, and you'll notice that they're owned by Bob. Now that does cause us some problems. Okay, so remember how I said you are not the root user in this exercise? You actually will need the root person to do this next part. So... Um, I'm going to assume that I have a, uh, a friend who's root, and he's going to come do his part. So this is what he would do. And the root user's account is actually called Smith on this machine. Gee, I wonder why. So what I would do is do SU Smith, like that. Okay, so now I am logged in as Smith. How do I know? Well, Bob is still logged in, but then I issued issue, which is um, super user, and then Smith. And then you can tell I'm in the Smith shell because it says Smith right here. This is the user, and this is the host. So now Smith is actually a member of the pseudo group, super user do. So for some of this, I have to issue um, issue commands or sudo commands rather. So what I'm going to do is make it so that all of these files are owned by WW data instead of Bob. So to do that, I'm going to do sudo ch on and then I'm going to put the user actually I'll do a hyphen r that stands for recursive. It means it's going to go through every file and folder and set the owner um, for each one without me having to do it individually. So I'll do ch own hyphen r and then we're going to do the user. Actually that would be the group and then the user 
that we want the files to be owned by. And then I'm going to finish up with a star at the end. Okay, and then I'll hit enter. It's going to ask me for the Smith password because anytime you issue a sudo, you have to put in the password every 15 minutes. Every time you do a sudo, it's a security feature of Ubuntu. Okay, and it didn't say a word. And in the Linux world, remember, a lot of times no news is good news. So now we can see that everything in here is owned by www-data. And that's very important. This next part would not work properly if we didn't set it up that way. Okay. So I think at this point we're done with the Smith user, but I'm going to make sure here. So let me pop up my browser. And in order to do the install and see how we're coming along, what you would do is put in the host, which is Ubuntu hyphen server in our example. And then uh, I'm just going to hit enter and you'll notice it loaded the index.php and we're in the setup folder. So the first thing it did was check to make sure we've got all the compatible software we need installed and we do. Okay. You can see we're running uh, PHP 7.2.10 and you only need 5.4 and we're running the um, proper version of MySQL and some other libraries that are necessary. So now let me do continue. Okay, so far so good. And just continue again. We have to accept the user agreement, which is the GNU, uh, which is uh, the most popular open source license. So we just got to accept that. It basically says that we're free to do with this code what we want, but we have to let, let other people have rights to edit it if we release it. Okay, and you can see that since we made all the files and folders owned by www.data, everything's fine. And remember that UMask thing that we set to 755, that was very important to make this step work. Okay, so now it's asking for database stuff, which we don't have yet. So now I'm going to open me a tab. And we're going to go to the PHP MyAdmin installation on the server. So I'm going to type in Ubuntu hyphen server slash and PHP MyAdmin. Now every server does not have PHP MyAdmin, but I quite happen to like it for doing this sort of thing. Okay, and you'll see that pre-populated is root. Now we're not going to log in as root because uh, we're just Bob. Okay, and I put in Bob's password wrong for the PHP MyAdmin, or actually the MySQL database. PHP MyAdmin is just a web interface to manage the databases. There we go. When I topped it in right, everything's fine. So now you can see the databases we have present. So I just need to go up here to the databases tab, and I'm going to make a database just for doing um, the cube cart. So I'm just going to call it cube cart. In a real production server, I try not to make my database names super obvious, which it doesn't necessarily make it more secure to use something that it's not, but um, it can slow down some script kitties. So I'm just going to create, and now I've got this blank database. Now, since Bob created the database, the Bob user is going to have full read write privileges. And we can go over here to privilege to see. And you can see the root database user has all privileges, as well as the data being sys. And then Bob here has the privileges that his account was given when it was set up. So he can't grant anything um, special to his databases. So. It's a security measure. So now we've got a cube cart database. I'm going to go back over to the cube cart installer. Now the database host in this configuration is going to be the same as the Apache server. So, and the PHP 
an installation. So most of the time you're going to see localhost when everything's on one box. Now, it doesn't have to be that way, but that's how it's going to be for this example. And the database name is kubecart, and whatever we would have called it, we put it in right here. Now, you could make a username, especially for just doing kubecart, but since Bob created it and has all the rights to do things to it, I'm just going to go with Bob. And then we'll put in uh, Bob's password to the database. And I'll let you in on a little secret. His MySQL password is Bob Password. Now the table prefix, this is a way that if you have an installation of MySQL and you only have the rights to one database they gave you, you can add a table prefix so that you can have multiple software installations in one single database and that way the tables will not interfere with one another. But I'm just going to go with uh, CB for kubecart. Now my store settings, uh, this is can all be changed later, but we're just going to go with uh, some temporary stuff. I'm going to do widgets unlimited okay and the default language is going to be English UK well we will uh, set it up for English US later after it's all been installed and then we're going to change it to US dollar for our currency now we need to set up an administrative user that runs within kubecart itself and this could be whatever we wanted it to be I'll just make a Bob user I wouldn't recommend using something like admin because I think a lot of people that do kubecart start with an admin account. So if they don't even know the username to your main account, then uh, that's a little bit more secure than them being able to guess starting with your username. And I'll just put in password for the password, for example. And I'll just call him Bob Jones. and make up a fake email address. Since this database is new, we don't need to drop any tables or anything. So I'll just go continue. And after a short time of some things being put into place, this will be nice and happy and it says um, that everything's done. And you can see it gives us the um, access to the control panel, and the storefront it's pretty neat okay now the admin panel is kind of hidden away it's got this temporary thing or not temporary but this it's named it so that this can't be easily guessed okay and that is how we set up cube cart now i want you to keep in mind that right now the server isn't totally secure or anything like that but I basically just wanted to show you how to get this set up. And I think that we accomplished that. So we'll worry about security later. Thanks a lot, people.